Hey, welcome back to another Sub to Studios interview here in the studio. That was weird. I did a loopy thing with my finger. Before you move on from this video, because you saw that it's talking about insurance, you need to understand that this is extremely important to your business. The interview you're about to watch could change the shape of your business going forward. I promise you this is content you won't want to miss. Welcome back to Subta Studios. I'm Paul Chambers, co-founder and CEO of Subta. Thanks so much for joining us here today. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel or follow us for some more great content. And what we have here today is something that I think every business should be thinking about. I'm joined by Gary Roshevsky, president of Century Risk Advisors. Gary, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thank you. So you're an expert in insurance in the subscription space. Uh, and you worked with BoxyCharm from the very beginning. So we're going to dive into that here in our interview and talk about it a little bit. But I want to start. I want to start with the basics, right? Um, because we, we've talked about this at length, you know, before Sub Summit. Uh, we've we've talked about it since then. And to me, like, I think insurance is one of those things that everybody should be thinking about, but never does. Like, it's it's kind of like almost like that afterthought sometimes. But it's one of the most important things for the business. And I know you guys look at it. There are kind of four key insurance products that people should be considering out there. So let's let's start with that. And can you lay that out for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we talked a little bit at Sub Summit. We put a presentation together for the attendees. And it really is, uh, I look at it falling into different buckets. So not only are you insuring the property that you have, the, the, the product that you're selling, if something happens to that, we call that property insurance. You're also selling. You're also protecting the li liabilities that arise from the product that you're distributing to your to your customers. So we call that product liability insurance. Um, so if someone sues you, if your project your product injures somebody, and then the the next bucket is really uh, the the fact that everyone is doing business today on we don't just call it the internet anymore, but any kind of e-commerce sites, right? So everything is done in cyber in the cyber world, and as you know, you're under constant attack. Um, whether it be ransomware, hackers, uh, people stealing pri private information, uh, anybody that can shut down your network. And insurance has now become such a big part of that. And it's really something that everyone needs to be aware of. So, so it's not just, oh, I might get that down the road. I need to get, I need to get that today. I need to get that day one because I can't afford to. It's a, so it's the cyber liability. The cyber liability insurance. Yeah. It's a very broad insurance policy uh, that covers all sorts of things that, that could happen. And then um, the other other type of insurance, which I kind of call there, there's a bucket of those policies, but they're really protecting you know the management of a company. You, if you're out there raising money to to launch a business, uh, we call that directors and officers coverage. But there's a whole bunch of other policies that go along with that, where you might not think about it. But if you're raising money from other parties, they're typically going to they, they you're typically have you owe them something. You owe them a duty of care um, when you're when you launch a business that you're not going to misappropriate those funds. You're going to manage it in the right way. And people don't realize that they actually have personal liability hmm. if they if they mismanage a company and, and, and mismanage their investors money. And there's insurance for that as well. Interesting. So there's so there's a couple different buckets there. And, and you know, I'd imagine, you know, if I'm a, a startup just getting started and I'm not raising money, you know, I would probably wouldn't be interested in that last one. I want to work our way through this. Right. Um, because we have a, a, a wide variety of companies here at sub to that follow our content and follow our channel. So let's start with the startup space. Let's say I'm a startup. I'm, I'm bootstrapping my business. I'm just getting started. What are the core things? What are the basics that I should be looking at for my business? Well, obviously you're incorporating and there's, you know, we, we kind of talked about this at other, other, other times we've been doing this is that, you know, you, you want to set up your company legally the right way mm -hmm. uh, that you're actually setting up a company and you want to have the right advisor. So if it's a finance person, it's someone helping you set it, setting up all of the banking and accounting side of it, the lawyer setting up your agreements and where you're getting your and your vendors, how you're doing your shipping. And then insurance is a really important part of it. So it all comes right in right in there. And to skip those steps early on is a major mistake because you don't want to have a whole bunch of subscribers. And then you got to go backwards and, and try to figure things out. But I recognize that a lot of people start these things up in their garage, you know, in their in their home. And uh, you know, it's kind of one thing at a time, but we know how quickly they grow. So looking at looking at selling something to somebody else that your company is now selling. As I said before, it's your property insurance and, and your liability insurance. So it's okay. Who is who's responsible for this product? Um, once you know, once I get it from wherever I sourced it from, is if it gets lost and I've laid out a whole bunch of money to get this product, who's responsible for that? 
if it gets lost? Who gets, who's responsible if it gets damaged while it's in my warehouse? And then who's responsible while it's on its way to the customer? And we, it, what's unique about the subscription industry is you're typically not a brick and mortar business. You're looking to, you're, you're doing this on your own. So we have an insurance policy that we basically provide to all of our people that are in this, in this industry that's called a stock throughput policy. And it's covering that product before it's in the box. We call that almost the raw materials, right? So that value of it. Once it's in the box, now you've created some value by putting it in the box, and now you've shipped it off to to your customer, and it's it's now it's it's valuable, and we want to basically we want to basically insure that for the selling cost of that product. So if I'm because there's different steps in there, right? You've got stuff that's sitting in my warehouse. I've got stuff that's gone out the door. Are there different levels of protection? Are there different types of insurances in there you need to be thinking about? So. So wait, basically, you don't know exactly what you're going to have. And a lot of times you'll, you might buy a huge amount of materials to cover you for, you know, three, four years, certain components of your of your of your business. Right. So uh, we look at what the average value is that you you anticipate having. And one of the points I made at, at Subta is that you want an insurance policy that's really flexible. That's going to cover you if for some reason, you know, today you have five hundred thousand dollars of value in there. But two months ago, two months later, you have three million dollars. You suffer that loss for three million dollars. We want the insurance to, to respond to that. So we look at what the average cost or the average value of that equipment is. And because it's always changing, this type of insurance policy is not super expensive. It's really unique to the, to this sort of industry. It's what we call a stock throughput because the the value of that of those products grow over time. And we're only probably insuring it for you know we don't know when when you're going to suffer that loss, mm-hmm. but it's. Um, it's it's priced appropriately and it's really helpful for companies that are growing quickly and typically you know when those things a lot of people end up using a fulfillment center uh as their as their business grows or their own warehouse and when it's sitting in those those places it's important to really understand what coverage you're getting because the, oh you might say oh well the fulfillment center they're taking care of it um, they're giving me five million dollars of insurance well maybe they are but you don't know who else is sharing in that insurance policy and whether you're actually going to may be able to make a claim if something happens. So it's really important that you have control over your own insurance product. Yeah. And that's a good point, right? Cause you might think like, Oh, if I'm in a, you know, oftentimes I'm in a warehouse, uh, if it's a shared warehouse space, am I protected? Or if you have a fulfillment center, right? You need to be thinking about that. And so that kind of leads me into my next phase of this as companies are growing and scaling, you know, what, what next set of layer of insurance do they need to be thinking about as, as you're building that business? Is there, do we introduce new things to new concerns that are out there for us? Yeah, so it's really important that you understand what's in your box. For, of course, you understand what's in your box, but the insurance company may not always understand what's in the box. And there's inherent risk of this, especially as your business, as your business changes. And we've seen many businesses where they're sourcing some material from someone else. They're really a distributor. So you have sort of the protections of that manufacturer, something goes wrong with that product. But now all of a sudden they decide they want to private label something. Now it's under under the, your, your brand. And now you sub- te- te- technically become a manufacturer of that product. So you pick up more risks than you had even before that. Um, and then if you're sourcing things internationally, a lot of times it's important to understand that you may not have the protections of, of those companies that are manufacturing it like you would from a US company. So something some, someone gets injured from your product. Um, for example, let's maybe you started out with only things that were um, no, things that weren't edible. And now all of a sudden you're doing edible things it creates a whole nother level of risk. So always thinking about that as your business changes, because what we know and we, what we, what we've learned is that the, these types of, these types of businesses, they evolve their model, right? I mean, they, they change as they discern, determine what their members, their subscribers really want to keep it fresh and new. And that also changes the type of risk that, um, that you're taking on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, do you think, is there like a good recommended method for checking in on that? You know, talking with your insurance provider once a quarter, twice a year, once a year, what do you usually recommend? So quarterly, absolutely. Um, and we're very hands-on with our, our clients in that regard because we know that it's changing. Should, um, I, so be, we, should I be fearful that you're going to try and sell me things I don't need? I, I, I hope not. I mean, I think it's more that it's more ha- making sure that you're working with a broker that's a business partner that understands your business. You know, these are things that people are going to be thinking about. There's ISIS for the benefit of our audience. So we know right. that you're a reputable carrier and, and you're not going to be doing that. But I think you know, sometimes maybe there's this hesitation like, oh, they're probably going to tell me I need a whole bunch of insurance, but maybe I'm not quite there yet. So, you know, is there you know some some way to be thinking about this? Okay, like, you know, if you're zero to a thousand subscribers, 
you you have to have these protections in place. And as you scale and grow, you know, is is that how you oftentimes take a look at it? Are there mental markers that you have, you know, and you're saying, you know, as they're growing, here's here's really how we recommend scaling into things? I think that what they need to understand is that insurance is typically going to be priced as a percentage of their sales or their property values. Perfect. So the way I look at it, and I, I had this in our in our in our talk at Subta is, you know, about about 14 cents per hundred dollars of value is what it would cost to insure your property in case it was damaged. To me, that's fairly inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in terms of what's called product liability, the insurance, if someone sues you and you need to hire an attorney, um, again, it's, it's, it's probably a couple of dollars per a thousand dollars of sales. Okay. So, so it's not, a, it's not a big number. And typically those policies are, can, can be audited at the end of a policy year. So you may come in and say, okay, I have, you know, like you said, a thousand subscribers, whatever that revenue translates to. Um, and that's what you tell us it is. You may be a startup, maybe you have even fewer. So the policy could be really, really not very much money. So it's not prohibitive to starting a bit. Buying insurance is not prohibitive to starting a business. That's what that's and, kind and of- And actually that's a great thing to be looking at from a budgeting standpoint. So as you're putting your budget together, because a lot of times what these subscription box companies do, you're gonna break down, you know, I've got this many products in there and I've got, you know, this much in shipping, I've got this much in merchant processing. One of your line items should be this much in insurance coverage. Absolutely. And we right. put those budgets to get, we work with those companies to put those budgets together and what those line items look like. That's as perfect. the company grows, that rate gets even smaller. So just as you can buy things more in bulk and get a, a better, better price, same thing with insurance. Yeah. Yeah. And looking out, you know, along, along the way as well. So now you guys had worked with BoxyCharm from the beginning. I'm sure it's been fun to follow their adventures, uh, you know, all the way from inception up to acquisition. Tell me about some of the things that, you know, how did they approach their insurance needs and, and how do they look at it as they continue to scale and grow? Yeah. So I, I think it's, re- it's interesting because I, you know, there were the, the, this, the founder was, was a true entrepreneur did other things before, before this company. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to work with them in, in, in that business as well. And, he was a very creative guy, not so much focused on every, you know, dollar and cent in terms of, you know, working with us. So we, he always had really good finance people that he worked with that helped him along the way. Um, and we would work with those, those folks constantly. But whenever I would, I would see uh, uh, Joe, you know, he pulled me aside. I remember the first time, maybe two years into, into BoxyCharm and said, you know, uh, insurance, really important. It's like I had another business before this where I had a whole bunch of stuff in a warehouse and didn't expect it. We had a big water loss at this warehouse. And I had no idea that I thought I was going to be out of business. And I had no idea that when I looked at this insurance policy, it came and it paid a whole bunch of money to make me whole again and really kept me in business. And he had a huge investment tied up, very leveraged uh, at that time in, in terms of the, the, the goods that he had in this warehouse before he even figured out how to do you know the fulfillment business. So he wasn't super focused on all the the nuts and bolts of insurance is part of his business, but he had a very robust insurance program because he understood the value of protecting a business and that, you know, there's things that you just can't anticipate and you're working really hard and that's where insurance comes in. It really is to, it's really a peace of mind. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these are, these are fairly low risk businesses. You know, we're not, uh, you know, we're not hiring people that are, that are scaling buildings or, you know, operating cranes. So it's, it's not that it's high risk, but when something does happen, it can be, it can be significant. So the good thing is that, like I said earlier, or I've said a few times is that insurance is not expensive for this type of business, but it's, it's very important. This is a, a evolving sales and marketing industry, right? You know, maybe it was at one time you were selling, you were sending emails out to, to get subscribers. You're getting buying email lists. Maybe that was, you know, five, 10 years ago. Now it's influencers, right? It's, it's, it's TikTok videos. It's, it's all these things now where you're, where you're getting subscribers, you don't know where they're coming from. And believe it or not, that that also raises your risk because that whole area of telemarketing, and it's not telemarketing, but that, that area of marketing is not always legally tested. Mm-hmm. So invasion, invading people's privacy. So we've seen all kinds of lawsuits with folks you mis, mis, misappropriating you know, music. Uh, they've come back and sued you know, the subscription business. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, just just uh, compliance on 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 websites, making sure it's it's compliance under ADA. Yeah. Uh, you know, all sorts of things, uh, opt out clauses, and there's there's insurance that covers this type of thing because, you know, you're not expected to be an expert in everything as as a subscription business, but there's a plaintiff lawyer out there looking to take advantage. Yeah, and so that was actually going to be one of 
Well, one of my, my next questions is what are some of the craziest things you've seen? But I want to back up for a second because we're seeing this happen a lot in some of these companies in terms of the ADA compliance lawsuits. And, you know, it's, it's hard because I think sometimes, I mean, you want to make sure you're catering to those with disabilities, right? You want to make sure your website's doing the right thing and, and program the right ways. However, sometimes a lot of these are just, you know, money grabs, almost like ambulance yep. chasers types yep. lawsuits. Yep. And so do you, are there insurances that protect against some of those yeah, frivolous there suits? Yeah, there are. There okay. are. And it's all, it always amazes me when the insurance company will actually pay some of these large claims. I'm like, wow, um, you know, you couldn't have fought that a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, but they, they're, they're experts at... They're experts at determining what their risk is too, right? And then sometimes they realize it's better to settle things. So I've seen things; these claims settle for, you know, a million, million and a half dollars. Uh, and I'm like, what was the damages? What was the injury really? Uh, right. But um, and and that's that's one of the pitfalls of insurance. Sometimes is that you're buying this peace of mind, but you, do, especially as a startup or smaller company, you're passing all that, transferring all the risk to the insurance company. So yeah. you don't have a say in whether they settle the claim or not. Now right. you're, you you have hopefully, you know, a good contract where they're going to stand in your shoes to protect you. And that's where I get involved. We have our own claims team at my company. That's really make sure that, you know, there's very little loopholes and very little wiggle room. And we only use reputable, a rated global insurance companies that, that stand behind uh, our clients. But, you know, once the insurance company decides they're going to do something, they usually have the right to go and settle the claim. It makes you, it protects you. It makes you go, it makes you go away. Yeah. But you might be as a, as a, as an owner be like, really? Wow. <laughs> but that's good to know that you're on that side of it saying, you know, asking that same question from an owner standpoint, like, Hey, you know, is there a different way to look at this or, you know, just, just making sure that the right things are being done there. Uh, because that that's, you're seeing so much of that in so many different ways out there today of, of all those, you know, frivolous suits or, you know, money grabs in different, different ways that are, are happening out there. And it's important to be protected. Yeah. And I, I just want to make a point that most, a lot of things are covered by insurance, right. but not everything is right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's business risks and we say that's not insurable. That's a business risk. Or as I, as I sort of made the point earlier, it's important to get a really good consultant to help you with your IT and, yeah. and the lawyers to help you with your agreements, you know, right. because, you know, you also can sometimes rely on those experts to protect you. If you get sued for, you know, ADA violation, for example, on your website, well, I contracted with, you know, ABC company to build everything for me. And they, you know, said that they basically, you know, promised that they were going to protect me for this. Well, okay, well now, and this is something we get involved with our clients. It's who in advising them on, on the vendors that they hire. Right. So if you hired an IT company or a website development company, right. To manage that part of your business. Okay. Did they have proper errors and emissions insurance? to protect them in case something like that, like the ADA violation happened and you wanted to sue them. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't ask that. So our office gets involved a lot of times when really asking in, in looking at the agreements, not just, you know, where you're buying your equipment from, but also who's doing work for you. And it's really important. So it's, I, I always, we always tell people we're, we, we, we do, we're, it's on our website. We're more than an insurance broker. We're really looking, we're really a risk management consultant and helping yeah. in that. Regard. Yeah, that makes sense. So any, any other fun adventures you've seen along the way? So any, any fun stories for our audience of some of the crazier claims you've seen made or, you know, those moments where you've had like, oh, good thing we, we had this in place? Well, I think it's important to understand um, that and this is some of the fights we get in with the insurance companies is you when we do that stock throughput insurance, you're, you're basically buying insurance for, for the to include your profit in the product. So so most of our clients don't buy it. For, from what their acquisition cost is, yeah. they actually build in their profit into the insurance policy, right? Into the into the. So when you make a claim, even though it hasn't even been put in a box yet, and it's sitting in the fulfillment center, or you know, we saw something where you know some dust got got hit, sprayed onto a product, and you know our client determined, well, I can't I can't put that in a box, I can't use it anymore. And then we got into with the insurance company. Well, look, now we, we can't right. we can't put that in a box, and it's not just what it's going to cost us to re uh, source that. It's what what would have cost what it would have what we would have lost by by not uh, being able to deliver that to our customers and our subscribers. So that's that's an important thing. Um, I think in in the uh, what we're see, starting to see a little bit now with sort of the, the delays in in supply chain that we've seen over the last couple of years is is the ability to um, make insurance claims if your supplier is not able to fulfill um, mm -hmm. the order you needed. Right. That's so that's kind of an emerging area. 
and it's it's complicated, right? Mm -hmm. But it's um, it's definitely something where we've seen we've seen an emergence in. Um, and I would say that 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 earlier example I gave you about the, the music, and I don't want to go too far into that one, uh, but <laughs> that's sort of like really, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you played somebody's song and now you owe them a few million dollars. So, uh, <laughs> and um, th those are the, those are the ones that I've seen recently um, that kind of you know are crazy. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Well, Gary, like there's there's tons of knowledge here. Uh, I want to also remind our audience that you gave a great talk at Sub Summit, and we're going to link that here as well for people to go check out and, and make that part of uh, this programming as well. How can people reach out to you and your company should they're looking for any more information and seeking support in some of the services you guys offer? What's the best way for them to do that? I think I think the easiest is just send me an email, Gary at CenturyRA.com, C-E-N-T-U-R-Y-R-A.com. Um, I am the uh, majority owner of this business, and uh, I'm 24/7 accessible. I don't know if that means anything today, but your your members can certainly just pick up the phone and give me a call. I'm always around, awesome. um, and I look forward to speaking with everyone that needs uh, needs this help in growing their business and. Uh, we really enjoy watching our clients grow in this industry. We love this industry because we just we just think it's amazing how quickly, yeah. um, you know, you grow. I use I use the Tesla example again in my in my presentation of the, you know, the zero to sixty in in two seconds. Uh, it's uh, it's amazing uh, once you get the right concept. So it truly I applaud, is. I applaud your industry and and what you guys are doing at Subtip. Yeah, yeah, we've got some amazing members, and it's been fun to watch them continue to grow. And uh, yeah, that the zero to sixty in one point nine nine seconds is is impressive and you've seen so many companies scale that way. Uh, and you know, I'm going to test this out, Gary, I'm going to call you at about 3 AM. We're going to see if this works. Absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the program here today. Uh, truly appreciate it. Reminding everybody go to centuryra.com or email them Gary at centuryra.com and reach out to them. A fantastic group and have been so helpful for our community and appreciate you continuing to do so. Thanks for being here today, Gary. Thanks. Glad to be here. 